How many things can Lauren get stuck in her nose ring today? So hello, my name is Lauren and welcome to Good Hair Day. The show where I talk about hair that isn't my own. Cause it's a wig episode. So now that we're officially on the cusp of October, in my book, it's basically Halloween. Lauren, it's still September. So help me if you ruin my joy. But wigs are not just for costumes. <laughs> no, if you're not into Halloween, that doesn't mean that you can't just rock a wig on the daily. Wigs are a great alternative because they're fun and festive and personally I like to change my hair a lot and putting a wig on is arguably a lot easier less damaging and sometimes cheaper than constantly changing your hair it's also a really good alternative if you have damaged hair or you just want to grow your hair out because putting a wig on is literally probably the most protective style you could do and while I do not personally claim to be a wig professional I do love a good wig and tend to bust them out for occasions or just your regular Tuesday and have a lot of friends that use them on more of a day-to-day -day basis whom I've all grown for the fullest real life tips I can provide you. But if you also have some advice, please feel free. Let me know. Comment section below. I don't know why I don't always speak in rhymes. I'm apparently great at it. But starting from the top, choosing your wig. Really, this comes down to a lot of different factors. Personally, after many experiences, I try to always go with a lace front wig. But if you're really about to go all in and this is a wig that you might be wearing every single day, full lace wig is a lot more versatile and you can do more styles with, but me and my bank account just like to stick with the, with the front. And the difference between a lace front wig and just a regular wig are obviously they come with lace fronts, but this makes the hair look like it's actually growing out of your scalp versus a harsh line that you get with most regular wigs. I just find these look a lot more natural and are easier to blend with your hair, but they are more expensive. So depending on what you're using your wig for, if this is a one-time use and everyday use or somewhere in the middle, you'll probably want to weigh the pros and cons of what kind you'll want. But if you are trying to go for a more believable do, I would suggest considering a rooted color wig that matches your actual hair color. Even if you're going for more fun, festive colors, just having a little bit of root can make a huge difference in making a wig look more natural because you can actually blend it in with your actual hair. But especially if you do have darker hair, you have a world of options. And last tip on deciding what wig to buy is stay away from super shiny wigs. If it's too shiny, it just looks fake. So if you can, it is better to try a wig on in store because then you can see what it looks like. But if that's not possible or you decided to buy one online and you get it in the mail and it's just blinding you with its shine, try throwing some baby powder on it. This is not going to save it by any means. A really shiny wig is a really shiny wig, but I have done this before and it does help a little. Additionally, if you're using a lot of product or you're just finding that your wig is getting a little oily, baby powder can again absorb some of that and even just dry shampoo does the same trick as that is its job. So for the actual application, the transformation, you will want a wig cap. There are more options out there. Typically, you're going to get one of two kinds. You will get one that looks like this, that is more of a full helmet situation or one that looks like this, that is more of just a headband. Really, I've never noticed a huge difference in the two, but I do think that the headband band one is a bit easier, especially if this is like your first wig go around. But before applying anything, you're gonna wanna prep your hair. Meaning that you wanna get that shit as close to your head as possible. I have little to no hair, so this is not a difficult situation for me. But for those of you that were blessed, I do recommend braiding it down as tight to your head as possible. Or at least pulling it over and you just wanna look as bald as you possibly can. And bald is a very cute look. Yes. But I would definitely stay away from buns or ponytails because that's just gonna leave a bump in your head. And people will be able to see that because a bump is a bump and a lump is a lump. Then just dip your head right in there. So some wigs already come with clamps or clips or something to stick this to your head, but sometimes they don't. So if your wig doesn't, just bobby pin that down. Otherwise it'll get snatched by someone sneezing. So if you did end up buying a lace front wig, it's going to come with a big old chunk of lace in the front. What you'll wanna do is pull this down past your hairline and then literally just cut the additional lace off. You don't have to be super concerned if you accidentally cut a little bit of hair because that will create some baby hairs, which can also help things look more natural. In fact, some people do just cut cut baby hairs into their wig. If you're having flyaways on the other hand though, something that you can do to kind of keep those managed is actually just rub your hands together. Hello dog. Rub your hands together until you feel genuine heat. And then pushing it down onto your head and sort of smoothing it out a little bit can actually keep some of those flyaways down, which is especially handy on the go. So depending on your wig, chances are the part that comes with it is going to be either too light or too dark for your actual skin tone. So what you can do is taking a few, few drops of concealer or foundation and you can actually just drop that onto the wig of your part and blend that in. 
personally though. What I find works best is actually taking a powder foundation on a teeny tiny little brush and putting that over the part. Also, if you are blending in your actual hair with the wig, I do usually just go ahead and put some powder on my actual skin just for consistency's sake. And if all else fails you and you have ended up with a cheap wig and no hope, don't underestimate the power of a hat. All you really need to do is cover your hairline and suddenly wigs look a lot more believable and you get a lot more use out of that cheap wig you bought for a cosplay once. And that is everything for today's video. Make sure you come back next week because I'm turning my hair into a unicorn mane. Not in the cute way. But until then, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Hissy Fit, and check out our gaming channel, Slay Tricks. And until next time, ta-ta! Cat, do you want your ball back? Now that you're done making a ruckus!